have stopped my Pete's Garage. Now if you want a classic car or a classic cruiser like this 1962 Studebaker Hawk GT and you go on long trips, you probably wish you had cruise control. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to install a Dakota Digital cruise control system. It's a complete system, comes with everything you need. It's not that difficult. As a matter of fact, you can probably install it over a weekend. Let's take a quick look at what comes in the kit and then we'll put it in. All right, now this is all the stuff you get in the box when you open it up. First you get the cruise control unit itself. And this is the unit with the cable on it that gets hooked up to either your carburetor or your accelerator pedal, whatever you're going to hook it up to, this is what's going hooked up. Now we're putting this in this vehicle and since it doesn't have an electronic speed control or a throttle body on it, uh, we're going to hook, hook this up and we're going to put the sensor, the hall switch here, on the drive shaft. So you have a magnetic pickup for the speed with some magnets that you mount to the drive shaft and by the magnets going by the, the uh, switch or the pickup, that's what senses the speed and that's what keeps your speed. Okay, so you get the, the sensor, the magnets, something to hook that up with. You get a mounting bracket for the unit itself. There's a cable bracket that comes with it, so if you're going to mount it next to your carburetor, you can bend it, and you can install your cable through here, so it's fairly easy to do. comes with all sorts of hardware, depending on where you're going to hook it up. If you're going to hook it up on a carburetor, a pedal, there's a lot of chain linkages, so if you have odd angles, it really makes it easy to install. There's all sorts of electrical connectors to do the electrical tie-in for the wiring harness. Uh, a bunch of cable ties. You get the cruise control unit itself, or the control unit, and this is what goes where we're going to put it in the passenger compartment. Mount it. There's two uh, bosses on the back here that would go in a hole. You just, something would just push it in and it mount. This is actually like a dash mount, but I have a very creative way of how we're going to put this in to make it look like it came from the factory. So this is going to be really neat. I got a great idea for this. So you got that, some convoluted tubing, and a bunch of hardware. That's what comes with the kit. Now what we have to do is open up the hood and figure out where we're going to mount everything. Now first things first, you have to set up your control box with the dip switches in the back. As with most electronic devices made for multiple applications, they usually have a little door on the back. You just peel this back and you can see all the dip switches inside there. A bunch of dip switches. There's 12 dip switches in there. They have to be set for the application and it's fairly easy to set they give you a guide here that shows you all of the applications that you're going to have, whether it's four, six, eight cylinder automatic transmission, uh, closed circuit control switches, that kind of thing. So you just have to read your, your application and set your dip switches accordingly and you're ready to install. All right, so here's all the rules for mounting that controller. First of all, you can't mount it in the wheel well or underneath the car anywhere it'll get wet. That's number one. Secondly, you can't mount it near any heat sources, so you can't mount it near the exhaust manifold, underneath near the exhaust pipes, anywhere where it's going to get hot. It has to be at least 10 inches from the coil because the inductor signal that comes up, if it's too close to the coil, the magnetic field from the coil could interfere with your signal. And finally, what was the last thing? It has to be mounted. Oh, you can't mount it in the passenger compartment because inside that controller there's a motor. If you're cruising and that motor's running and it's inside a passenger compartment, it's quiet, you're going to hear a motor running and be annoying. So they recommend you don't put it in there. So with all of those restrictions, I ended up mounting it on the firewall on the passenger side. And it actually worked out really well. Uh, and I'll show you why. There's a couple good reasons for that. The other thing you have to consider is the cable. Where are you going to hook the cable up to? I'm going to end up hooking it up to the carburetor and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. I originally wanted to try and hide it so you can't see it. I didn't want it to stick out. I was trying to hook it up to this linkage for the accelerator pedal, but underneath, the only place I could mount it, it would end up getting wet, and it just, it just could not work out. It was too close to the exhaust manifolds and all the power steering. It just didn't work out. So really, after I went through all those rules, this is the only place I could mount it. Let me show you that. Now this is where it fit really nicely. The controller fits right here. These uh, hoses for the heater core, they are naturally, go, they go that way, they're on the bracket underneath there, so this thing really fits here nice and neat. Uh, the cable going over to the carburetor goes underneath the blower motor, and the bracket for the controller itself actually goes to one of the bolts for the blower motor, and it goes underneath this lip where the blower motor is, so it goes underneath there, so it kind of acts as a fulcrum point, so that when you put on the bolt, this thing is not going to shake up and down, and it's pretty secure. On top of all that, the wiring harness here has got to go inside the engine compartment, uh, it's, I'm sorry, the passenger compartment, to get to the power 
and the rest of the controllers and then you have to have the center which will go down on the outside of the car underneath but I also had this hole here there's a hole here where the uh, of the air conditioning unit would go so I have access right here into the passenger compartment where I can put a grommet and run the wires through there and look nice and neat so you can see even though it is a little obtrusive it doesn't look like it fits in a 62 car with this huge wiring harness it doesn't look that bad I might even be able to make a vanity cover and cover that up all right, first I want to mount my cable here going out to my carburetor. So what I'm going to do here is I mounted the bracket. I cut the bracket, made a Z-bend in there, and this is where the cable will be secured right here. And I'm going to connect this cable to the th throttle linkage here with an eyelet. And there's a little eyelet that goes on there, and you've got to put, put a thread on this plastic. So I'm going to pull this on the other side, and I'll show you how to put threads on this plastic. And I'll screw it into here and hook it up to the carburetor. Now what I'm going to do here is fairly simple. I put a white mark on here. That's how far I have to put threads onto this uh, plastic sheeting on the, on the cable. And it's going to attach to that bracket with this little eyelet that's threaded. Those, there's threads in there and that will get screwed down to the bracket. And the way I'm going to cut these threads is they give you this, this nut. It's kind of like a body nut and it's designed to cut threads. Of course I dropped the nut and an airplane went over so I had to wait a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this nut onto this plastic. I'm going to start to thread this. Start to make some threads. It's just kind of like a, acts like a die, I guess you could say. Try to try and get on there as straight as possible. Okay, now I'm going to turn that with an 11, 11 millimeter wrench. I'm just going to turn that around and cut threads. I had to stop for a second there. Now, once you get that started, you can see they're starting to cut threads. And all you have to do is keep turning it on as far as you need to go. Now I'm going to turn that all the way up to my white mark, and I'll have threads to put my eyelet on. Now that my threads are cut on there, I can put my eyelet. And this is, a, this is the little clamp that's going to hold it down to the bracket. And I want this to end up this way. So make sure you put it on there right. So it ends up right. I'll screw this on. All the way. I'm doing it by hand, but it's, it's a little tough. So it's going to take a little time. Alright, long story short, this is what I end up with by trial and error. You can see I have my, my cable backed up with the nut that was used to thread. I have a, another cable tie there to hold it down and I have it looped around the firewall with another uh, tie holding down that cable. And what I did was I used this chain. This chain, they give you a whole bunch of chain and a whole bunch of different fittings. That fitting I was going to use didn't fit well with the uh, ball, ball end for the throttle connection. So I used a chain and one of these, uh, one of these little, little deals here, a little chain connector just like a regular pull chain. So what you basically have here is you have the connector with the little chain, the connector to the cable, and now as this pulls, that this will this will move. And as the this cable pulls from the motor, as this pulls in, it'll hold it in position and it'll control the throttle that way. The only thing I have to do here is hook up my return spring and and that's all set. All right, my cable's all set. Now let's go and put the wiring through the firewall. Now what I'm going to do, I'm simply going to run the wiring harness through the firewall here with a grommet. You have the connector here that goes down to connect up to the uh, hall switch that's going to be on the drive shaft and a ground wire. I'll hook up the ground wire and the rest of the wiring harness has to go through the firewall and they do make it pretty easy for you they give you these two connectors so this disconnects and it makes it easier to get this mess through the firewall because there's a relay in here and a couple fuses. So I'm just going to feed that through the firewall and we'll take a look on the inside. Now you can see what I have here. The unit is mounted and I have the entire wiring harness going through the firewall there with a grommet which is nice and neat. I will run the wire for the pickup sensor on the drive shaft. I'll run it through the carpeting and have it come out right where the sensor is. So. Let's take a quick look inside at the wiring and then we'll go underneath and mount the pickup sensor and the magnets on the drive shaft. So my wires come through the firewall there 
and I have the carpet pulled back because I'm going to run these wires underneath the carpet and these are the connectors right here I was telling you about they make it very easy to run those wires through the firewall this, the wires are really long I'll have to tie those up uh, but first I want to get the the uh, sensor mounted on the drive shaft underneath the tunnel here so I can run the wires up through the carpeting and come up and meet my um, wiring harness up in front and then we can hook the wiring up put the controller in and we'll be all done alright now this is the uh, hall switch or the magnet the pickup that goes underneath the vehicle to pick up the signal from the magnets that's, that are mounted to the drive shaft and there are some rules for this as well it comes with this angle bracket so you can mount to the body and you just screw this on here and you mount this to the body so that first of all it can't be near any heat sources so mount it away from the exhaust manifold and away from the catalytic converter uh, it has to be mounted at least three quarters of an inch from the drive shaft so it's got the front of this coil has got to be three quarters of an inch from the drive shaft and it has to be no more than 12 inches behind the u-joint so you got to get it up as close to the u-joint as possible to minimize vibration the wire that's on here is eight feet long so we got a ton of wire here so I'm gonna mount this underneath the vehicle it's got to be on the center line of the drive shaft it can't be off center it's got to be on the center line three quarters of an inch from the drive shaft and I'll mount it up there I'll, I'll show you how I'm gonna fish the wire through the body to get it up to that uh, wiring harness that goes into the control module and I'll mount that and show you how where I put this All right, there's a magnetic pickup mounted to the bottom of the uh, pan where the heater is for the heater core that goes inside the passenger compartment the pickup is three quarters of an inch away from the drive shaft and it's right on the center line I ran that wire inside to the passenger compartment with a grommet so that wire now goes inside the passenger compartment I'll show you where that goes then the wire comes through the grommet and will go up to the front right up at the front with all the rest of the wires and I'll show you where I'm gonna put the controller that's gonna be really cool alright I have all the wires inside the car now getting ready to hook those all up the last thing I have to do is mount the controller now the controller is a pretty small unit it has two mounting tabs on the back with all the wiring it's pretty simple on and off uh, accelerate and coast and cancel uh, accelerate and coast it cancels with the brake switch so I have to find somewhere to mount this thing and if you think about it if I, if I figure out where I'm gonna put this thing um, regardless of where I put it I'd have to drill holes in the dashboard and I'd have to ruin it and there really is not a good spot to mount this thing really but the owner had a great idea let me pan down here for a second he said hey can you mount it inside the ashtray well the question is yes but I'd end up destroying his ashtray and it's really not a good fit so let me show you what I did here so I didn't want to destroy his ashtray so we take this out of here measure it up and make this excellent awesome I made this aluminum bezel uh, my friend that my friend Dennis at Reason Machining and Design I designed it he machined it for me I polished it up and look at that nice mount for a cruise control fits nice in there now let me th th I'll thread that in there and sit that in there and you'll see how it looks and I'll just thread the wires in there and if it well works out perfect it should fit right in there just like the ashtray look at that perfect perfect fits in there nice Buttons are nice and flush, easy to reach when you're driving. Looks like it came from the factory. Now I can take these wires, run them underneath, and I can start hooking up the wiring harness. All right, now I have to put the magnets on the drive shaft, and they're really small. Uh, I drew this picture here, and this is what the magnet looks like. It's a kind of a trapezoid shape with these two little uh, spikes pointing out and the reason those are there is because that's where the twist tie goes around so when you put these magnets on your drive shaft the twist tie is going to go in there and that's what holds it in place the directions say you can use epoxy so I am going to put epoxy on there epoxy those in place and I'll put the twist tie on after just to make sure they don't move when I put the twist tie on now they have to be placed four equally places around the drive shaft which is at 12 o'clock 3 o'clock 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock and you're asking yourself, well, hey Pete, how do I figure that out? How do I know how to measure that? Well, here we go. Remember back in math class when you said to yourself, why do I have to learn this? I'll never have to do it again another day in my life. Well, today is a day where you're going to have to use it. It's very simple to figure this out. Four magnets, four equal seg uh, segments on a circle. I measured the drive shaft. The drive shaft has a diameter of 2.75 inches. 
which means a radius of 1.375. And what we're looking for is we're looking for the distance between the magnets, which is the hypotenuse of the right triangle formed inside the circle. We know the two legs, it's a right triangle, two legs of the radius, 1.375, 1.375, and you just figure out Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which is 1.375 squared plus 1.375 squared equals our hypotenuse squared. That comes out to 1.891 plus 1.891 equals c squared, and c squared equals 3.782. So c, the hypotenuse, is the square root of 3.782 which means our hypotenuse is 1.945 inches long. And in order to figure out or make those marks on your drive shaft, it's pretty simple to do. First, you make an initial mark on your drive shaft. Make, make a mark. I'm, I'm just going to use this as a drive shaft as an example. Make a mark on your drive shaft. Take your calipers and set them to 1.945, like that, and lock it in place. Take your first mark right there and then take your your caliper and put it on the next and inscribe a line and when you scribe the line you'll see the next mark for the next mar uh, magnet on the drive shaft mark that line but don't continue that around because there's a little error there so go back to your original spot and mark, mark the second one on the on the top and then you can go and mark the final one I did that just did that and it worked out perfect let me show you how that looks and uh, you can figure it out and put them on yourself worked out great Okay, all four magnets are epoxied to the drive shaft with a twist tie wrapped around. When you put the epoxy on there, make sure you grind the metal to make sure it's clean. Clean it off with some solvent to make sure that metal is very clean so the epoxy will stick. The uh, set or the unit itself comes with a black twist tie, which is really kind of funky and I didn't think it worked well, so I went back and just used a regular twist tie. They're all the same width. There are some people that say you might want to use a metal twist tie or a metal clamp to put those on or put around there, but that epoxy I used on there is really strong. Those things are not going to fly off there. That twist tie is acting simply as a safety, and if you put a metal one on there, it will block the magnetic field from the magnet, and it might not work when it gets up to the coil, the coil up there. So that mag magnet is going to fly past that coil and it's going to give me a signal since it's, there's four of them on there, it will give me 8,000 pulses per second. That's how that works and that's how that's set up. Now I'll finish my wiring and we'll give it a try and see how it works. Now here's the wiring harness and don't let it scare you, it's really not that difficult. I've already plugged in the wiring harness into those two connectors that I pushed through the firewall so this is what you're going to end up hooking up. And it's not that bad. The first thing I'm going to hook up this is the lead that comes from that coil underneath that picks up on the drive shaft and that gets put into these connectors and it's pretty simple. I already know that this is the side that goes together and you just match the gray wire to the gray wire, you push it in and the black wire and the blue wire get lined up. Now I can just hook that up underneath the dashboard where that connector is. Here is the connector from the control module or the controller and all you do is you're matching pretty much matching up these wires this connector goes to this connector here and you're going to put these wires in so they match up with those colors pretty simple let me do that and we'll, we'll continue on the rest of the electrical is really simple these are the f these are the five wires that come from the control switch the pink wire is not used so I'm going to get rid of that I'll cut that the black wire and the blue wire are ground so I'll put those together, I'll put a clip on there and ground it right to the frame. The white and gray wire are accessory power. I will connect those to the brown wire that comes off the harness. And the brown wire has a 10 amp fuse in it. And this goes over to the fuse box for accessory power when your switch is on accessory. You just plug that in, you get accessory power going to power up the unit. The gray wire that comes off here is not used because I have the coil sensor, so I don't have to worry about that. This harness is also not used, because this would go to a six-pin uh, six harness controller if I was using that, so I'm not using that, so I'm going to disconnect this and take it out just so it's not in the way, which only leaves three wires. The red wire coming from the controller is fused. It has a 4-amp fuse in there. This goes to the hot side 
of your brake switch. So you power this switch. This goes to the controller. The purple wire goes to the cold side of the switch. So when you step on the brake switch, that's what tells the unit to disengage. And the last wire is the blue wire, and this is the safety switch. The dark blue wire here goes to the tachometer. And what that does is it protects if you have an automatic transmission and you accidentally slip your transmission into neutral and the engine runs away, this will notice it and shut off this cruise control. That's a protection for the engine. So it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to hook up all those wires and we should be ready to power it up. And all I ended up with was those wires going up into the dashboard and I used a single piece of convoluted tubing to make it nice and neat. So up from the dash. You don't really see anything. So we'll do some pre-operational checks and then we'll take it for All a right, ride. We'll do some pre-operational check. I'll turn on the ignition and our unit should come on. Okay, with the ignition on we got power and this should come on when we hit on. The on light comes on so we're good. Everything works good. I can start it up and we'll take it for a ride. Alright, what we're going to do is we're going to put it in cruise control. We'll turn it on and we'll see how it works. We'll look at the controller here. First thing you have to do is turn it on. Turn it on and the light comes on. You have to leave it on for three seconds before you put it in cruise. Put it on for three seconds. And the bottom is to set. So I just press the bottom, set, and now we're cruising. Alright, we're on cruise. And it looks, it works really well. We're going uphill and it's holding the, uh, holding the speed quite well. Let's look at the controller here. We'll see if I want to slow down. You just hit down. It slows down a little bit. If you want to speed up, you can speed up a little bit. Just push, a couple, push it a couple times and it speeds up. It feels like it's a couple miles an hour per click. So if I, if I hit it up again, it goes up about another mile an hour or so. If I go down, it'll slow down. And of course, the brake is what uh, disengages the whole thing. Works great. All in all, it was about uh, 15 hours to put it in, start to finish. Uh, wasn't that bad. Didn't take really any special tools, and it was pretty straightforward. I think if you do it yourself, you should have a good time. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Leave a comment, and I'll see if I can help you install it. Thanks for stopping by Pizza Garage. Mm -hmm.